for you sorry sorry doctor sir no, 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 you can go ahead sir okay okay so good evening everybody welcome to this next uh, webinar that we are uh, doing on uh, from uh, the orif for uh, dnb students brought to you by auto tv uh, today we have the pleasure of having professor hitesh shah with us again and he's going to talk about uh, x-rays in pediatric orthopedics and the idea would to have this uh, as a more interactive session than usual so uh, i'm sure this is going to be of interest for all the dnb students and even for us so over to you hitesh uh thank you dr john thank you for uh, giving again the opportunity and um, sharing the our the knowledge uh, can can you see the screen yes sir yes. yeah we can see and it's good okay uh thank you very much so what i am going to say that the many of the uh, dnb student and ms student uh doesn't have the facility to see so many the x rays so i will uh, describe the first few slides what are the uh, requirement or what are the question would be asked the same pattern uh, we'll discuss and interact the few pediatric x rays okay so i'm going to say the pediatric orthopedic imaging x ray that will be kept in the exam so the commonest questions would be asked by the examiners and in the table viva uh, describe the x ray and that would be asked to the all the post graduates at the end of the description they can say what is the correct diagnosis if there is a disease or the fracture or anything is there sometimes examiner will ask how do you classify this and what this case belongs to and how would you treat this condition these are the four common question these are the very common question describe the x ray diagnosis disease classification and read the x ray few points uh, the these are the for the x ray for the confirming diagnosis treatment plan prognosis complication and outcome that would be asked by the examiner so i am not taking the lectures but anything out of this can be asked by asking the examiner may ask such in detail what is required uh, please remember we are the in orthopedic branch we are not in radiology branch so it require before taking the x ray sometimes the the bright students say oh, can you describe give me the details about the clinical details clinical examination knowledge of anatomy order of ossification particularly for the we are dealing about pediatric radiology and the normal radiation and the last but not least any x ray when we describe about that for the easy understanding for the description because we are dealing with the diverse pathology in uh, orthopedic imaging it includes congenital developmental paralytic neuromuscular metabolic tumorous condition tumor like condition so it is very difficult to finish every single condition in 30 to 40 minutes okay so the general rule by rule we need to describe the a b c of the x ray what are the a b c alignment bone and cartilage take it from the alignment from the proximal to distal or distal to proximal or from center to outside or outside to in see about the bone how is the bone whether it is the hip joint how is the the pelvis how is the femur if it is the any other the the bone you describe what is the bone how is the cartilage cartilage means articular cartilage facial cartilage epiphyseal cartilage and any other cartilage like a trochanter you can describe about the apophysis and never ever forget about the soft tissue okay these are the basic rule of the x ray without going in a time detail i will start with uh, one case any of the post graduate can describe janki who are the people there sir narayan and uh, sachin and few avinash more we avinash uh, avinash is also there Avinas? I think we should start with him. Yeah. 
because that was the basic introduction. So, yes, what sir. is the yes. description of X-ray? You can sir, make any attempt. Yeah. This, this is the uh, X-ray of a skeletally immature patient uh, showing pelvis with both hip, AP view, and Good. in in this X-ray we can see the uh, left or so I can't decide about the side because it's not mentioned. Okay, but looking at it, say it's left, okay? So providing it's been put the right way around. Okay. Left hip is, uh, joint space is increased and the... Uh, so would you say joint space is increased here or would you say the head does not seem to be in the joint? Yes, sir. It, it looks dislocated. Yes. So you can say that, okay? Say that the ossific nucleus of the head and the head seem to be out of joint, okay? Then you can give description. So what would you then go and talk about? So are there some lines or anything else you want to talk about? What about the size? Yes. What size of the ossific nucleus, is it the same on both sides? Sir, it is... Uh, uh, in lesser size of, of in left side it is of lesser size correct okay so what does that mean is the size smaller or is it not ossified adequately well, it is not ossifying i think mm. and okay. another thing quadrant on the basis of line horizontal and vertical uh, it is in which quadrant it is proximally Okay. So, anyone wants to tell us the lines that you need to draw in these X-rays or in a CDH or a DDH as we call it today? Yes. So, what, what is expected as Dr. John said that when there is a left side hip is not in socket of acetabulum, you need to mention the left size of the capital femoral ossification is smaller compared to the right side as janki mentioned it is not in the lower and inner quadrant it is there in upper and outer quadrant you can draw a two lines there is a what horizontal line connecting both triradiate that is horizontal line also hills and inner line and vertical line on the side of the the acetabulum and that take it as vertical line that is the vertical line yeah. it is expected to you say the centon lines is broken and another angle is the acetabular dysplasia you will compare about the line horizontal line and opposite say that's acetabular dysplasia and as dr john said this is ddh i am not going in detail because i am not taking like the how will you treat it what is ihda classification initial only i said yeah. today i am going to describe only the description and diagnosis because we are going to cover the many x-rays. So this is a typical example of the developmental dysplasia of hip. We'll go to the next case. Uh, uh, describe, is it the same or is it something different? I think Gotham is also there. So Gotham, you are in. You please read the x-ray. Yes. Hello, sir. Good evening. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, this is the plain radiograph showing uh, a plain radiograph of the skeletally immature patient uh, showing both hip joint in AP view. Uh, in the left hip joint, there is absorption of the neck and the head segment. Tri radiate cartilages are open on both sides. Okay. And, sir. Uh, some remnant of the neck and the greater tocanter part was present. Okay, good. And, so, uh, to sir, say that, would you want to say whether the hip is in joint or not? No, sir. This is subluxated. Yes, sir. So, what is strikes you first? Uh, is the, the thing you should bring up. Uh, then talk right. about neck is absorbed, head is uh, is not seen, uh, irregularity, whatever else you see. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, my, uh, I would. No, no, don't like go to diagnosis. Okay. Don't okay, give sir. a diagnosis till you get asked for it. Okay. That's another thing. Okay. That you have to do. okay, sir. Okay, sir. So what else? You haven't finished the description, have you? And sir, uh, 
and the shape of the estabulum is also irregularly outlined sir okay, okay. what else yeah good and uh, what what are the other things that so you look at just and sir at, there is also migration upward migration of the left femur okay okay what about the tear drop what is about uh, tear <laughs> Yes, Does it look the same on both sides? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The, how it is different on the left side than right side? Uh, in the left side, sir, uh, I could not recognize tear drop in left side, sir. Yeah, yeah. Can you make out this tear? Can you see the yeah. arrow or no? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Right side, there is tear drop. Definite tear that, drop, sir. That, that that is a tear drop is widened actually. This is okay. the tear drop, and the tear okay. drop has been widened. It's okay, distorted the distorted and widened. Yeah? Yes. 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 So the widened tear drop is the sign of the hip dislocation or the decentralized hip for a long period of time. Yes, sir. So, what is your diagnosis? It may be, sir, uh, developmental dysplasia of the or second D is the post septic hip. Okay, so you is saw it the like... first case? You saw the first case. This no, and this. No, sir. I missed, sir. Actually, I. So, but I why was do you say D... So, why do you say DDH as your first diagnosis? Why did you say the DDH? Yes. You find okay. such regularity and in DDH? Uh, no, sir, but can be found in the uh, late cases <laughs> where uh, dislocation is of uh, more duration. So, so the X-ray that you saw first, that is also a late case, yeah? This yes, one, sir. yeah. It's not a newborn child, yes. is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is it similar to this case and this case? No, this no is sir. Not... No, no, sir. There is a difference in both X-rays, sir. So, DDH, there is a possibility of delayed ossification, but it will never have irregularity on acetabulum. It will not have the lysis and sclerosis. If you see the small yeah. lysis <laughs> and the sclerosis, that would not mm -hmm. be a radiological features of DDH. And whenever you see the irregularity of the acetabulum, if you see the previous x-ray, the acetabulum is dysplastic. You can see it is a clear, it's a very dysplastic, but it is straight. It is not irregular. Okay. If you yes, see sir. this case, it is irregular and there is a irregularity on either Erosions side of the hip. Yeah. yeah. So the diagnosis is very clear. That would be a, a sequel Thomas of Smith. the septic arthritis where there is a femoral head get resolved. Yes, okay. sir. So uh, the I'm not going in detail of diagnosis and management, but in clarity, uh, somebody is going to ask it. You need to find out whether the femoral head is present or absent. That is on the line of management. Depends on that. You can decide for the further management. Okay. So how would you find that out? Just <laughs> yeah. How do you find that? <laughs> Yeah, so, sorry, sir. Uh, How will you uh, find out if the head is there or not? You want something else or just uh, this on one? Frog leg lateral view, sir. You see. Uh, the MRI. Yes. Okay. Or Any, anything correct. else? Or hip arthrogram. Arthrogram, sir. Arthrogram, yes. So okay. it's a. Either of the one would be uh, required, but the most probably the MRI is of choice because it's a non-invasive. And second is that with uh, uh, fibrosis and infection, sometimes dye may not go to the all the place. But the importance of the arthrogram, it will be dynamic. So you can see about inflection, adduction, abduction, mm -hmm. interrotation, mm -hmm. and extra rotation. Okay. So it would be... Uh, Good to do the MRI. Okay, yes, we'll sir. move on to the next case. Uh, again, it is the similar cases. So here you can describe that. A anybody wants to describe? So uh, this is a, a plain radiograph of a skeletally immature patient showing both hip uh, AP view, uh, showing left hip uh, uh, Acetabulum as well as head and neck absorption is going on. And, uh, 
What do you know is going on? Sir, because uh, it, uh, neck is uh, still there. So it could have healed. How can you tell whether it's active or not at this stage? Yes, sir. I can't tell on the basis of the x-ray. So, so say what you can tell on the basis of the x-rays, okay? Basically, what is visible, you can say. Yeah. Can you can you see the femoral head com epiphysis compared to the opposite side? No. no, no can you see the physis? Uh, okay. Can, no, can, you can't, can, the apophysis, you can see. You can see, but uh, physis of the, means physis, yeah. capital femoral epiphysis. Yeah. Okay, can can you see the neck is uh, the density of neck is equal to opposite side? Density no, decreased, uh, margins are irregular. Okay. okay, good. What about the acetabulum? What about the acetabulum? Yes. Regular uh, surface is also irregular. Yes. So it's osteopenia. A, osteopenia is there. Yes. So if somebody is going to ask that, what is your diagnosis? Is it a normal or abnormal? Abnormal on what sense it is abnormal? Can you see the ischium on either side? Can you see the obturator foramen? Sir, uh, obturator foramen is also distorted. No. Is... <laughs> yeah, okay. not, a, not obvious. Not okay. Can uh, you compare to ischium on both sides? Ischium... Okay. I, I will draw that. This is on normal side. You can see the ischium. Yeah. It hardly is visible. But if you see his, what is there, it's prominent. Yes. Okay, so that he's talking about the ilio ischial line. Yes. <laughs> ischium is lower down. Yeah. Ischium is lower down. Yes, that's the ischium. But the, the... You can see a break in the ilio ischial line there. Or yeah. a yes, distortion of it. Yes. So this is this is the, the case possibility of the very straightforward possibility of infection that may be the high grade or a low grade. It will be also a typical features of the tuberculous hip joint also. But you need not to say it is a tuberculous disease. You can say this is a sequelae of the infection. Yes, sir. Poss possibility of the high grade or a low grade because it is even the osteopenia is visible. There is irregularity of the acetabulum. Then femoral head is destroyed and damaged. So it's a possibility of the in fact, and it's involving the ischium and the posterior column as well. Yes. So something that you need to, if you tell that, you will impress the examiner. Okay? That so will sir, be credit. Yes. Yeah. Mort mortal and pistol type, we can say. Yes, but but again, it is the mortal and pistol side. The neck size is even smaller than this. And it's much, by that time, it's usually quite smooth. It's never... So, uh, never yeah. yeah. Sir, why obturator foramen not visible on left side, sir? Yeah, because it is in flexion. It is in flexion. So whenever it is the hip is there, the child has got the flexion deformity. It will never yes, be visible. Okay, sir. Okay, we'll move on. The next case is. Uh, can you describe it? Or is it tough, Dr. John? Is it tough? No, I'll go for next case. No, no, no. This they should be yes. able to. Is it? I thought it is having with the full length x ray. So I. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. Yes. They should be able to. I think they should be. Yeah. So, Gautam, you just done your exam. Yes, sir. Should... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, visibility. So... Visibility is not good. Okay, it's not the clearest x ray, but you yes, can sir. see things. Yes, sir. This is a. Uh... Plain X ray of a skeletal immature patient showing both the lower limb. Uh, there is a sir, absence or. There is a femur. Absence. No, yeah. femur absence. There femur is, is absent or you can or see something the is part of it. Some remnant, some remnant of femur. Only some remnant of femur in the left side is present. In the okay. left side, knees, knees wind, ankle wind, tibia, and the foot bones are visible, sir. Yes. What about fibula? Fibula, huh? Uh, yeah, there is no fibula in the left side, sir. So what does that tell you? Uh, proximal. Oh, what is the diagnosis? PFFD, sir. Proximal focal yeah. femoral deficiency. Yeah. Okay, so with because the... with, with with absent fibula and uh, shortened. What about the hip joint? 
सर मेरे को दिख नहीं रहा क्लियर एक्चुअली मेरे स्क्रीन पे फीमेलिया Yes, sir. So, sir, how much percentage it is, sir, in uh, PFFD? I think it's a uh, few cases we have seen with in sir's clinic. Almost yes. a complete loss of femur also. No, there's literally yeah. only the distal uh, segment uh, remnant of the distal part is there. Yes. Yes, it is only distal part is there. So, if somebody is going to ask that, how do you manage that? You can say that I would like like to check the hip stability, knee stability. amount of limb length discrepancy presence of the associated problem and the tibia and foot problem depends on that we can decide that okay it's a complex issue but if somebody is going to say that how do you manage depends on that we can use it the commonest modality in india the commonest extension answer process. for the post graduate extension plus the x that what dr john has said extension plus so this is not a case that you will try to lengthen and reconstruct in most situations okay yeah. okay sir i mean there are a lot of pfts which are relatively mild you can lengthen you can do the hip you can do osteotomies you can do many things but this is a really major undertaking so uh, probably an extension prosthesis would be the uh, standard option in most situations unless you are a real uh, Unless you draw belly or something, and you try to do something for it, but I think <laughs> <First time. laughs> this one even he won't try. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, correct. I agree. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll move on the next case. The, the we'll move from the congenital to the developmental condition, or the somebody will say also congenital. Can you describe? So uh, this is okay. Yet let's get to someone who hasn't spoken yet. Okay, sir. Thank you. Who is there? Sumit or uh, Sumit here? Here, no. Yeah, please. Go ahead. You just read the X-ray. If you have any problem, then somebody else will take over. Hello. I think yeah. that Sumit was is not there. Who is, is Sachin there? Sachin, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so Sachin, Sachin, you describe it. Yes. So just start. So basically, sir. yes, sir. When you, when you are, get asked this, don't uh, just stare blankly. You can start your description. You can always say this is an X-ray of a pelvis with yes, hips. It's a skeletally yes, immature, immature child. child or patient. Then you can start describing the X-ray and then go on to. So don't get stuck and uh, just say nothing, okay? Okay, sir. Sir, this is a plain X-ray of a skeletally mature patient with uh, uh, both hip and a hip view, and sir, in the so both hips, hips, pelvis and both hips, okay? Pel pelvis and both hips, sir. including the uh, lower part of the lumbar the spine and the upper femur, okay? So upper, yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, sir, mm, there is a decrease in the angle of the femur uh, shaft and neck angle in the right left side, sir. Okay. And, uh, and there is also a discontinuity with the uh, head and neck, sir, in the left side. Discontinuity. Yes, sir. Fracture line. Is it physis? It may be physis yes, also. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Why? Yes. Why did you say discontinuity? It may be physis. Capital femoral level. Physis. Physis. How is the orientation of physis? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you said skeletally mature child, so you have to. Child. 
Yes, sir. Before you come to this, would you describe the pelvis? Is it straight? Is it square? Is it tilted? Yes, sir. It is sir, tilted in the left side. Okay, so, so go step by step in your description. Yeah? Okay, now you've come yes, to sir. the tip. Okay, so you say there's uh, coxa vara, which is what you are saying is a decreased neck shaft angle. Anything else? No. You, you see the vertical physis, physis line. Anything else? How is the greater trochanter? Is it? My greater. Yes, what is the, yes. What about the trochanter? Greater trochanter is outside, sir, and externally. Uh, it's more prominent. Or? Sorry? More prominent. No, what is it? Where is it? Is it where it's supposed to be? Or is it gone up or down? Or? My greater. Sir, it's gone up, sir. And. So where is the normal level of the trochanter? Yes, exactly. I was asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the normal trochanter. <laughs> yes. And this is the head. So where is the normal level of trochanter? At the center of head, sir. Okay. Excellent. It's correct answer. But where is it? Is it way proximal? Upward. To... Yes. Upward, sir. So what is, what is the, the diagnosis? That is, in fact... We can see there is a, some sclerosis is present on the metaphysis compared to yes. the opposite side. The, the physis orientation is almost vertical. This is oblique. Yes, okay. sir. So the shape of is head the, is also deformed. Of, uh, yes, sir. Shape yeah. of estabulum is also distorted <laughs> with respect to right one, sir. Yeah. So you can say this is a case of, of the... Developmental or congenital coxa vera. Developmental or congenital coxa vera. Okay, very good. So only one angle that is required to measure in that, that will predict the prognosis. What is that angle? Sir, can we say uh, avascular necrosis in this case? No. Avascular what? necrosis, there would be sclerosis of that. You can't say the avascular necrosis. Anything is avascular necrosis, that should be the sclerosis. Okay, then if there is no sclerosis, you cannot say there is avascular necrosis. Yes. Okay, so this is a case of the developmental coxavara, and the most important the angle is the HE angle, HE line yes, with Hilgen inner lines yes, and vertical. So it is almost 90 degree. So it should be uh, less than 25 degree then the it will not go for recurrence yeah okay and so the more deformed it is this tendency for progression okay yes so when the neck shaft angle uh, sorry is very low then there's a chance of the thing progressing as well okay so this is the dcv developmental coxavara somebody will say congenital coxavara yes next case I think uh, Narayan is here. Narayan. Sir, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead, please describe. Uh, this is the sir, x ray of the skeletally immature patient. Uh, the upper one is taken in the AP view and the lower one is taken in the frog uh, leg view. Okay, good. And uh, we can see the sir, uh, sclerosis of the spine, lower spine. In the... uh, not not spine sclerosis of what you want to say head of femur or uh, no sir lower spine it uh, whitish whitish things that's what I'm seeing view problem yeah. see about AP view just check the AP view okay I can say that exposure in frog little is more what about AP view. Uh, in the compare AP, the sir, left side and compare the right side. What is different? There is a, there is a sclerosis of the, the left side. There is a sclerosis of the roof of the acetabulum. Left okay. side. Uh, and, uh, and the teardrop is the... Uh, Look at the capital epiphysis. Is this the same on both sides? Uh, in, is the height the same on both sides? Is the shape the same on both sides? Shape, uh, sorry, the shape of the, which one, sir? Physis. Physis. Epiphysis, sir. Epiphysis, sir. Uh, no, sir, shape of the both sides. 
uh, not similar a smaller on right side and sir uh, okay. okay so these are this is you need to pick it up at this stage okay if you yes, say this is normal then you will have missed the stage when you can maybe prevent things from getting worse yeah yes yes so can, can you see the yes. arrow is it is it the, something is visible the arrow yes sir visible what is that what is that uh can you see the arrow the physis is widened sir okay Meta so it, it is metaphysical god sign yeah it's a metaphysical the yes. cyst will be there and that is yes, there sir. are two cardinal sign whenever you see the capital that femoral is. apophysis is sclerotic and the the height is reduced that is that is the height of the capital femoral apophysis if you see the about a height and uh, that is nothing other than the parthis disease parthis disease yes sir and whenever there are two important aspect of the parthis disease if the sclerosis is visible that is active disease if sclerosis is not visible that is hill disease okay yes, and you can have a stage of disease 1 2 3 4 depends on that you can have a many radiological features but if you see here the joint space if you see almost, the yeah. left side and right side the right side is the medial it's joint like space is increased compared to that the physis inclination is same but there is a capital femoral apophysis with the metaphysical cyst and as like a gate sign this is the classical case of the parthis disease so yes, why sir. is that space increased why there is a space increase <laughs> sir due What to cartilage hypertrophy sir Okay, possible. Early sign, early stages you get. Not in yes, early sir. stage. Uh, yeah, not yes, only sir. in the early phases. You know, the head looks smaller in the X-ray. The size of the head is not smaller. Hmm. Yes, sir. Stage in this part is. Okay, so it may be because of the cartilage hypertrophy or. sometimes because of the effusion and the yes, hyperemia sir. in the joint the synovitis that will be the joint space would be widened and always see the most important aspect in the parthis you can measure about remers migration index and the extrusion whether it is extruded or not that is only the surgeon dependent variable okay can you describe is it the same or is it something different this is different Uh, what is, what is it? It's a different diagnosis Absolutely. or a different different X-ray. Yes. X-ray. Okay. Nash, you said it's different. So tell us what's different. Yeah, Vinas. Sir, uh, acetabular margin is also irregular here, and uh, for, start with the head, okay? Uh, head. What is, is the it, is it? what is difference is it the size is same no sir size is uh, reduced okay is it sclerosis or sclerosis with the lysis or something sclerosis, is yes, sclerosis along with lysis is there okay so that is called as fragmentation okay then yes, what yes. Ab what about the metaphysis shortening no not shortening it even fact it is a broaden broadening broadening, okay. broadening sir so if you broadening. compare the lateral you can see it very clearly on the two sides yeah Hmm. Artificial broadening. Okay. What about the uh, containment? Is it still contained in inside the? No, no. It is no, subluxated. No, it is subluxated. Okay, and and if you see in a frog lateral position, when you when you draw a, a the frog lateral position, if this is the head, that is going like a the symmetrical, the concentric, the two circles are center having same. Is it the same? No, so joint space here and joint space here is it same no sir no. asymmetric symmetric joint so, space reduction so, so when when in in frog lateral it should be the equal okay so it is not there so this is case of the advanced stage of the parthis disease with the hinge okay. abduction hinge abduction yes sir okay, so what happens in hinge abduction sir on uh, extreme of abduction there is a uh femoral uh, remnant of the head and neck abduct on the lateral wall of the scapulum preventing further abduction and internal rotation so what will happen sir patient complain of pain in the extreme movement sir 
No, no, no. So what happens when you abduct the hip? What moves? The pelvis tilts, okay? Yes, sir. It'll hit the pelvis and the pelvis will tilt. So when you're yes. examining, you need to make sure that the pelvis is it's stable. Stable, yes. otherwise you will think it's a hip movement. Yes. That is what you mean by hinged abduction. Okay, so that's, as you abduct the hip, where's the noise coming from? Getting disturbance from someone, whoever that is, please mute yourself. Okay. See Prakash here. Net. Yes. Yeah. Can you describe the next X-ray? The hinge abduction is there. Center of the joint. Center of the movement of joint will move from the center of the hip to the lateral margin of acetabulum, and it's a hinging at the lateral margin of acetabulum. So there will be crescentric widening of the medial joint space. Okay. Can you describe this X-ray? Sir, uh, may I, sir? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a plain radiograph of the skeletally immature mm -hmm. patient showing both the hip joint, pelvis, and the mm -hmm. upper portion of the femoral in AP projection and mm -hmm. lateral view, sir. Yeah. On the on the sir left side, uh, there is the irregular mm -hmm. acetabular margin, sir. Uh, head is acetabular margin. Sclerosis and irregular acetabulum both, sir. Wow. Mm, this is identical on both sides. What is very okay. visible? Visible. Visible. Visible is the sir. Uh, there is a uh, slippage of the neck metaphysis of the left uh, femur in relation to the left uh, head of femur, sir. And there okay. is the. So do you is that what you describe on the X-ray or you? That is part uh, you are saying. Yeah. <laughs> what you are able to see just say. Um, sir, uh, shape of the head and neck on the left side is different from the right one, sir. So what is different? How it is different? Yeah, what is different? Sir, there is a... Sir, can, can you see uh, the opposite side? When, when there is a, the... If you draw a medial and the lateral aspect of the neck... Is it the same I this one? No, sir. No, sir. So what is different? What, what is different? This is always concave. This is always concave. There is no convexity. What is here? There is a bump, sir. Yeah, that is a bump. A bump is present where? Is it in the, the, the head or is it in neck? Neck, sir. Neck. Ah, is it in a neck? So yes. when, when this is there, so how to describe that? Uh, yes. Sir, uh, uh, there is an irregular. No, sir, I could not. What about the physial line and the epiphysis? Physial line is the um, relatively more vertical on the left side, sir. On the AP view, yeah, okay. Yes, and sir. On the. What about the epiphysis? Is it lined with the. Metaphysis or is it? No, sir. That I am uh, yeah, telling, sir. Uh, physis and the epiphysis are in different line of directs on the left side in relation to the right one, sir. So how is it different? Sir, anterior, anterolateral displacement of the metaphysial segment with respect to the head in the left side, sir. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So... So you, you can say there is a disruption between the epiphysis and the metaphysis. That is yes, the physical line is wide and you can see compared to the opposite side. Hardly it has been visible on opposite side, but it, you can see that there is a bump on that and the physis has been slipped. The epiphysis has been slipped. So this is yes. case of SCFSRs. slip capital femoral epiphysis. epiphysis. Okay. That is you are so now, Yeah, so importantly we still talk about the Epiphysis slipping when we are describing it on X-rays, okay? Yeah. I know yes, you, you are trying to show that you know that it is not the epiphysis that slips, but it is the metaphysis. Yes. yes. You're describing the X-ray, we still talk in those terms. Yes. Okay. Come to that later when you can when the discussion starts. 
you can say in reality it is the head which stays in place and the metaphysis that slips but if you okay you might confuse yes. this okay yes. so very common to have the vara slip again it is called as allolescent coxa vara but it is very rarely we can get the valgus for confuse and not to confuse you are not kept it a valgus slip but it is possible yeah i think sir uh, they have asked few times by the term adolescent coxa vera for scfa yeah that is exam yes, also yes. that's why i said that sometimes it will be asked to you is a adolescent coxa vera and if you see the the angle the heads up the yeah. neck angle is decrease here and that is the reason it will be called as and most common 96 percentage it will be in vara slip it is not in valgus the alignment of the, yeah. so trithovan's line yes sir yeah. metaphysis metaphysis process the heads are in the normal in uh, slip condition metaphysis upper uh, line from the metaphysis does not cross the heads sir so that is 138 okay should we go on the next case or is yeah, it sure. difficult yes, is it difficult no no they should not yes yeah, so it is like a okay is it the same like the other two when there is the... what is visible somebody can say yeah sir in the uh, hip joint sir is sclerosis of the stabulum and the um, head yes both sides sir yes and sir um, normal physis of the proximal femur is absent okay normally because it is sclerosis we can't make out yes, that yes what is sclerosis is it the head or the physis this looks sclerosis sir it physis sir no it is the epiphysis <laughs> it is not a physis it is physis okay physis okay. 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 okay can you see that now enlarge so now, yeah, now you see yes. now you yes. can see that So, so so it's a bilateral symmetrical symmetrical yes. flattening and sclerosis of the epiphysis so what are you thinking of because a bilateral sometimes the examiner may ask you that's why i kept this x ray whenever there is a bilateral involvement of the capital femoral epiphysis always get the skeletal survey take the entire body all the epiphysis when epiphysis of the distal radius and alla it is a possibility here what is missing is the spine x ray the spine would be there then you can think there is something is abnormality of the spine is present or not if it is not been kept it here that means epiphysis of the both side epiphysis on the distal femur and epiphysis of distal radius and alla is abnormal this is case of the multiple epiphyseal yeah. displacement yes if, if spine is also abnormal what does it become that is that is spondylo epiphyseal dysplasia okay so that is the yes this is we have discussed very quickly somebody can mention we have discussed already this quick revision for all of you to discuss just it was part of another case yeah in pfd what else you have got anterolateral bowing of tibia so <laughs> is this anterolateral bowing of tibia is that what you will call it something absent. else sir absent many? absent fibula fibula so yes this is absent fibula so what is the case it's a fibular fibular hemomelia yes sir Amy and whoever has said as antero lateral bowing is not anti is anterior is correct but yes, which sir. part is the medial and medial. which part is lateral this ah, side ah, is medial and this side is so the, it's the antero medial bowing medial yes sir yes sir sorry not sir not antero lateral bowing okay yes so what are the what other abnormality do you see in that just uh, go back to that one what other yes. abnormality do you see there sir absent talus No, it's there. Is there? Alice is there. Yeah. There. Okay. It's equinus. And why is it in equinus? So this is one of the things Contract. you get early in these patients, huh? The fibula emilia. Yes, it is. Etc. You need to get the ankle corrected. Yeah. 
Yes, it is very common to have the equinus and valgus. If you see that epiphysis, distal tibial epiphysis, it's wedge safe. So it is valgus. When the lateral support is not there, it is very common to have equinus valgus. Very, very common. And you have often have a fibula on, on large. Which yes. You have to excise when you're doing your correction of your equinus. Yeah? Okay, so next one. So we'll take, I think we'll start with Avinas. You just read the x-ray, even if you do not know the diagnosis, you please read whatever you are able to see. So one is probably an earlier x-ray and the second one is probably the follow-up x-ray of the same patient, is it? it is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought to keep only one, but I thought they will know about, that is the hint, hint for <laughs> Hint for the, the diagnosis. Yeah. Sir, this so, is a, uh, there is a posterior medial bowing of the medial. Okay, yes, posterior medial bowing of the tibia and fibula. Yes. So what tibia. does that mean? Okay. So whenever you so, see a variant of CPT. Really? No. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's not a variant of uh, anterolateral. That's why, bowing, please, okay? please remember there's a visualization, there's an earlier x ray. It's it's an x -ray. So, it is, yes, sir. It, the, is it deformity is getting less or more? Deformity uh, heal itself, sir. In follow up x ray, also, it's there is a correcting to... itself. It doesn't yes, heal itself. Yes, sir. Sorry. Correct it's itself. correcting itself with the time, sir. Okay, so it is just opposite to the anterolateral bowing lateral where bowing. the yes, lateral history is different. Okay, remember this and visualize this memory. That's why remember the congenital postromedial bowing of tibia is benign. Only shortening would be issue. There are other issues also, but for the postgraduate understanding, the deformity per se may correct most of the time. And what is the risk of fracture? Don't know, sir. Sorry? Don't know, sir. You don't know? Okay. okay. I think the risk of fracture is no more than in a normal child. Okay. So it is not a sign to brace them to stop them from fracturing or plastering them or giving them orthosis except for the shortening. Okay. Yes. Because okay, they sir. About, end up about four centimeters or so short and you may have to lengthen them to equalize the limb. But very rarely you need to do something for the deformity, but there are some cases now you have to do something. Yes, but it is as per se, it is benign compared to the anterolateral yeah. bowing. Risk of fracture is nil. It is zero. Yeah. Okay, now other other bow. Now you can say this one is anterolateral bow. That's an anterolateral bowing. For comparison, yes. we keep all three together. The anteromedial bowing is in fibular hemimalia, congenital postromedial bowing, it is self-limiting, and anterolateral bowing, again, it is, you need to brace them to prevent the fracture. Yes, okay. sir. Next case. Yeah, yes, I think Gautam did answer Anterolat it. Anterolateral bowing with the fracture, it's pathological fracture, sir. Of what is uh, of oh. the distal one third of the tibia, sir. Hmm. What about Most fibula? Times. What about fibula? Yes, sir. Fibula. Also fracture of fibula. Yes, sir. Some disease Most. you know of? Most like congenital pseudo arthrosis of tibia. Okay, good. Yes, it's a congenital pseudo arthrosis of tibia. Again, for the extra description, you need to mention. There is the, the Boeing is just present on the proximal third. If the if you are expected to say about that, there is a lysis and sclerosis, there is the atrophic changes. That is so these are the typical example of the congenital pseudoarthrosis tibia. And Janki wants to say it may be associated with the neurofibromatosis. Yes, sir. So when you see these patients, you must always examine them for neuro uh, neurocutaneous markers. Yes. Neurofibroma, cafe alerts, and 
what else uh, sir skin rashes tuft of hairs patches rashes. on the back do you call them rashes no, or do you call them no sir skin you call them you have told skin already patch. skin patch cafe or lot spot cafe sir. ole cafe ole means yes. what yes. you know what cafe ole means yes sir uh, something related to sir some it's coffee with milk okay simple as that okay sir like, don't make it too complicated huh? <laughs> okay sir it's french this thing for coffee with milk okay okay sir yeah it is already written that the tbi is absent Yes, so can you describe it? The still part of the the physis epiphysis is not visualized, and there is a proximal part of the the even physis is not visualized. Even the tarsal bones are missing. Okay, so it's already written on diagnosis, and I did not keep the animation, but you can see it's a <laughs> case of the tibial hemimalia. Okay. Missed it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Going of the proximal metaphysis of the tibia, sir. Yes. Going of the proximal metaphysis of the tibia. I did not intentionally keep it lateral because I want to focus only on AP. So. What do you call it? Diagnosis spots. <laughs> Now these are all spots because tibial hemimalia, fibular hemimalia is a spots. Okay, when there is a posterior and a medial, there is a slope, slope of the epiphysis, slope of the articular cartilage, and slope of the the physis. Epiphysis, yeah, have, physis. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have class about this one in the beginning. I think first, uh, second class we have on this one only. So if he is not able to answer. No, sir. I am missing. I am missing no. name, sir. I am. I know this. No, the class uh, was not I'm on not, this. It was on. Related. Sir, मेरे को नाम नहीं याद आ रहा. Okay. What? What? Tangential tibia vara. Sir, tangential tibia vara, also also known as Blount's disease. Yes, it is a okay. Blount. How do you know it's Blount's and not simple tibia vara or? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you say? How do you say it's uh, Blount's and not genuvarum? So the spur coming from the medial side uh, that differentiate from the blood sand. Okay, what else do you? What else is the is the classical angle that you measure? Metaphysis, diaphysis angle, sir. Metaphysical, diaphysical angle. How much it should be? More than one fifty. More than. <laughs> the the official metaphysical angle more than what one fifty no 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 Yes. Yeah, something simple. <laughs> Spot. Uh, Narayan, available to try, sir. Sorry, try. Yes. 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 Never spot seen it. this before. No, sir. Oh. Avinas. Oh. Yes, sir. In yeah. India, we can able to diagnose this actually. If in yeah, India, it's uh, not as common as it used to be, but we still see. Sir, there uh, is broadening of epiphysis hills. Sorry. Sir, broadening of uh, epiphysis. Broadening of epiphysis. Okay. Epiphysis or epiphysial plate? Epiphysial plate. Yes, sir. Okay. And what else? Metaphysis. Yeah. The what else do you get in this? It's not classical playing, here, cupping, but playing, yeah. playing, and cupping of the metaphor of the thing. Yes, and the, that is a bowing. You can see the Allah is bowed. Bowed. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's so not classical. Listen, listen. Yes, sir. 
What do you get it in rickets? Yeah, this rickets. Is, yes, sir. In India, if you can't diagnose rickets, you need to do your training again. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. I think so many times you have seen. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now this one. This is slightly more tricky. It it's a tricky. But I I am not going to confuse that because I don't think so. Everybody will have seen this. But this is again. It's a case of a scurvy. Yeah, it is a case of the scurvy. You can see. See, they can scurvy. diagnose tricky things, but not simple things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, no, sir, I was waiting for. I was waiting Avinas to answer, sir. In that gotcha. case, previous one, sir. Okay. In previous gotcha. case, sir. <laughs> good, good, good. How do you know this is a scurvy and not non-accidental injury? Oh. Yes. Sir, How do you know it's not? How do you know it's not? Sir, sir, one pencil spur sign is there, sir. That is present. So you scurvy. get that in uh, non-accidental injury also, corner sign, yeah. So you need to take a history to make sure it's not that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Other jump to scurvy. Uh, okay. Other physical signs. Because a lot of the children who come with. non accidental injury will also be malnourished and poorly looked after okay yes yes there is something you must keep in mind when you are dealing with children. yeah can you describe this so description or diagnosis description uh, this is the lateral view of the Skeletally mature patient showing ankle joint and the bone of the foot. Okay. And uh, sir, there is a reduced medial arc. Lo medial longitudinal arc, sir. Is reduced. Is it reduced or is it reversed? I'm. I'm. I'm in. Yes, sir. It uh, it is reversed. What In is the shape of rock or bottom shape, sir. Okay, what else? And sir, there is a talonavicular dislocation, equinus of the ankle joint, sir. Okay. Yes. So diagnosis. Uh, can you tell what can tell us? Okay, so it's a. And so, what view is required to diagnose congenital vertical talus? This view is enough. I think this is the classical case. But then, its examiner might ask because what is the view for differentiate between the oblique talus and vertical talus? Sir, a weight bearing, weight bearing weight lateral view. If the child is nine month old, not weight bearing, then sir, plantar flex view, sir. Not plantar flex, plantar flexion view. Plantar flex, yes, sir. Plantar flex, lateral view. Sir. Okay, so again, that is the you might be asked that the angle between talus and calcaneum. It is talus and calcaneum in AP view, talus and calcaneum in lateral view. The ossification center of the tarsal bone, the longitudinal axis of the talus should pass through the longitudinal axis of the the first metatarsus. First, first yes, metatarsus. If it is broken, it is the talus axis is plantarwards. It's a congenital vertical talus. Talus. Okay. Yeah. Something a uh, little tricky. Yes, sir. Congenital dislocation of knee, sir. Okay. Good. That is a congenital dislocation of the knee. Yes. So, anything else that you associate with it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is fine. In this X-ray, sir. In the knee itself. Yes, sir. There is hyperextension of the knee, sir. Mm. Okay, that's there. What what else is often along with this? Where is the patella often? Ah, uh, ah, sir. Patella, I have seen. 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 I have seen.
the it would be associated with the quadriceps contracture and ACL deficiency. It is very common yeah. to have that. So quadriceps yes. contracture, patella dislocation, and often no ligaments in the joint either. Yeah. Yes. Sir, how so, to assess patella dislocation at this is Feel it. Feel the patella. Okay. Okay. Sir. Examine, examine the patient. Huh? One of the exactly. things that okay. you do most of the times. Okay. Sir. Diagnosis spot. Come on. Sprengler shoulder syndrome, sir. What yeah. shoulder? Sprengel. Sprengel shoulder. Sprengel. Huh? Yes, sir. Sprengler. This is very difficult. Now it's been trauma. Dr. John, you want to go ahead or we'll stop it? <laughs> it's all our trauma. Uh, we've got another. Oh, no, we're done. <laughs> Sorry. Your time is yeah, up. Because, yeah, I think <laughs> time is up. Is. Yeah. So this is, yeah, because that's why I was going faster. There are some x-rays. Just That's very straightforward. Lateral condal. Lateral non union. I think, sir, uh, we may plan for upper limb x-ray because so many upper limb questions in OSCE they have asked in uh, this type. So for pediatric upper limb x-ray, if you have, uh, then we can Mama. plan on that. Pediatric upper limb. Okay. Sorry, okay. you have muted. Ritesh, that was excellent. I think uh, really interesting and exciting. So yes, thank you. thank you. Thanks, and uh, so we have to do it again with the others that <laughs> with the trauma <laughs> experience. Upper yeah. limb experience. Okay, great. Trauma Thanks very much, and uh, so that was a great session. And thank you, Ritesh, again for taking your time out and uh, being with us. And uh, all the students for being there. I hope you learned from it and we'll catch up again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Very informative. Bye, sir. everybody. Thank you, sir. How Thanks. are things in uh, Manipal in terms of the COVID thing? Not hit, Yeah, not the cases are increasing, but it yeah. is okay. Being in same. How about in Patna? It's increasing, but uh, again, not. But it always comes later to Bihar. Na? Oh. <laughs> Two months after it, it's Bombay, it, it's Patna. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes. I think it's that. started. Yeah. At least Even today, we have. Yeah. So, still in between, uh, none of our patients were turning out positive in the routine testing. Again, yesterday, we had one patient turning out for. So, with no symptoms, just in the routine testing, turning out positive. So, it's obviously started again. Okay. Okay. Hope it doesn't okay. get as bad. Okay, bye.